This is module two, lesson one, writing and interpreting equations. After this lesson, you need to be able to translate sentences into equations. Let's learn writing equations. A mathematical statement that contains two expressions and an equal sign is an equation. So it's gonna be an expression on one side equals an expression on the other side. So our key concept here is writing equations. There are three steps. Step one, identify each unknown and assign a variable to it. Step two, identify what's given and their relationship. And then step three, write the sentence as an equation. Example one, write an equation for a sentence. So write an equation for the sentence, 20 minus the quotient of 7 and x is the same as twice x. So first recall that quotient means division. So knowing that, as we see here in different colors, we have 20 minus, so 20 and then subtract, the quotient of 7 and x, meaning 7 divided by x, is the same as, there's our equal sign, and twice x. So if we put it all together, we would end up with an equation of 20 minus 7 over x equals 2x. Check your understanding. Write an equation for the sentence 4 times a number less 10 is equal to 16. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. For this one, 4 times, so we're looking for 4 and then multiplication. A number less 10. So if you had a number and you took away 10, it's 4 times that. And then is equal to 16. So I'm looking for 4 times the number minus 10 equals 16. So if I'm looking, then B would be my correct answer. They just use X instead of N. If you chose the first one, no worries. That one is also very close to what it should be. We probably should add some commas in here to help us differentiate between the two. But the correct answer should be B. Example two, write an equation. Our real context is life online. Of 799 teens surveyed about what they do online, some use a social network. Of those on a social network, 430 say people their age are mostly kind online, and the remaining 193 do not. Write an equation to find the number of teens surveyed who are not on a social network. So step one, we're going to identify the unknown and assign a variable to it. So here we want to know the number of teens who are not on a social network. So let's call that n, because that is what we do not know. So n is our variable for the unknown. Now, step two, we're gonna identify what's given and the relationship. So here we were given that 799 total teens were surveyed. We know that some teens use a social network and some do not. 430 of the ones on the social network say people are mostly kind. The other 193 do not. We also know that the 430 and the 193 make up the ones that are on the social network. The rest of the 799 are not. So if we're writing out an equation, we know that adding the people who are on social networks and the people who are not is equal to 799. So we would add the 430 people that are, who said kind, the 193 people who are, who said people are not kind, plus the n number who are not on social networks, and our total would be 799 people. That would be our equation, and we could now go through and solve to figure out n, how many people are not. But here, we're just writing the equation. Check your understanding, read through the situation, and determine which equation of the four best represents the situation. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. Going through, first we're going to assign a variable for what we don't know. If we're looking at 
the variables that they gave us. They said C chapters. So C is the unknown amount of chapters. What we do know is he's read 12 out of 32. So 32 is our total. Already read 12. And each chapter for eight days. So he has eight more days to read. So if we're looking through, our total is 32, which I'm just going to read through. All of them say 32. He's already read 12. So that must be where that 12 comes in. So we got to figure out what's happening with the chapters and for eight days. So in order to figure out the total chapters, it should be what he's read already, the 12, plus what he still needs to read. So this minus here and that minus here aren't going to work. So D and A can't be the correct answer because we're not taking away what he needs from what he already does. We're adding it to what he's already done. So now we're left with the chapters divided by eight or the chapters times eight. Which one is going to get us to our total of 32? So if C is the amount of chapters each day, let's say as a guess, he has to read two chapters each day. If he reads two chapters here, or if he reads two chapters here, which one of those is going to make more sense? Well, if he read two chapters and then divided that by eight, then that means he really only read a quarter of a chapter. Adding that to 12 is not going to get you to 32. In fact, to even get close to 32, we would have to say there's way more C than 32. That doesn't work. So we would take the chapters he needs to read each day, multiply that by eight, because he's doing it for eight days, and then add it to what he already has. So C must be our correct answer. Example three, write an equation with multiple variables. Here, they broke it down. Step one and step two are the same as step one. They just broke it down further, but we're following the same process. So our real context here is geometry. The perimeter of a rectangle is twice the sum of the length and the width. Step one, let's identify our unknowns. We don't know here the perimeter or the length or the width. They don't tell us any of that information. What they do tell us is that the perimeter is twice the sum of the length and the width. So let's give variables to all of them. So P is going to be equal to the perimeter. Makes sense. Starts with P. This is an L. I'm going to call length L. And I always draw an L as a loop because otherwise, to me, it sometimes looks like a 1. And I don't want to get that confused. And then W can be width. So now let's identify the relationships. So twice implies two and that we're multiplying, but twice the sum means that you're going to add them first, then multiply. So if we're writing an equation for this, we would say that P equals two times the sum of L plus W. So two times length plus width. Check your understanding translate the sentence into a formula. There are actually two of them here. So read through each situation. In the first one, choose the best answer. In the second one, write out the equation for yourself. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. For the first one, we're saying horsepower, which is going to be H, is equal to the product, which means multiplication, of the motor's speed, so I'm guessing based on the variable they used is M for speed and then T for torque. You might have wanted to use S for speed. Be careful with S. Sometimes you write it and it looks like a 5. So they used M and T divided by 5,252. So which of these is showing that? That would be B. M times T divided by 5,252. If we look at the other choices, C and D don't make sense because you're not dividing by 5,252. A is close, but this is showing that you're dividing by the torque. But it's telling you you're multiplied the, based on the product. For the second part, you should have wrote the equation 24 plus 2C equals 136. So 24 million more than, which implies plus, 
twice as many packages. There's our 2C. And 136 million total. We get that equation. Take time to pause and reflect. Did you struggle with anything in this lesson? If so, how did you deal with it? Pause the video now and write down your thoughts.